Hello, I'm Jim Lampley. Coming up November 12, HBO Pay-Per-View will take you live to Las Vegas for the third meeting between two of the greatest fighters of the last 25 years. Number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, Manny Pacquiao of the Philippines, and his most persistent nemesis, Juan Manuel Marquez of Mexico. They first met seven and a half years ago, and the fight ended in a bizarre and controversial draw. Anyone would have thought at that point that a rematch would be quickly in the offing. Instead, it took nearly four more years before they were ready to meet again. The fight took place in Las Vegas, March 15, 2008. Both fighters were coming off of victories over Marco Antonio Barrera the year before. Neither fighter had been satisfied with the draw result of the first fight, so both were, in a sense, seeking revenge. at the Mandalay Bay Event Center in Las Vegas, Nevada for one of the most highly anticipated rematches available in the sport of boxing. Juan Manuel Marquez, now the 130-pound champ, takes on superstar Manny Pacquiao. These two men fought to a much-talked-about draw four years ago at the featherweight limit of 126 pounds. But before our main event, a three-fight undercard beginning with lightweight title holder David Diaz, fighting for the first time since sending Eric Morales into apparent retirement. Tonight, Diaz takes on Ramon Montano in a non-title fight. Then, undefeated Mexican prospect Abner Mares faces Filipino Diosdado Gabi. And just before our main event, featherweight title holder Steven Luevano takes on Thailand's aggressive Terzak Jandang. Marquez versus Pacquiao is being brought to you by Mandalay Bay. Boxing at its best. Tecate beer, cerveza with an attitude. Rockstar energy drink, party like a rock star. Southwest Airlines, symbol of freedom. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by HBO. A beautiful night in Las Vegas. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. Welcome to this terrific pay-per-view matchup on HBO Boxing, a fight we've looked forward to for a long time because it continues the string of great matchups in the sport, which began last May, continued all the way through the end of 2007, and now persists tonight with a matchup between what Ring Magazine ranks as the number two and number three pound-for-pound pound fighters in the sport, meeting for the ring's vacant belt at 130 pounds. And incidentally, the great matchups continue a month from now when Ring Magazine's number four and five ranked fighters pound-for-pound pound in the sport, Joe Calzaki and Bernard Hopkins, will be going against each other. In the main event tonight between Pacquiao and Marquez, we hope to answer the riddle left behind by their first fight when one judge scored the fight by a healthy margin for Pacquiao. Another judge scored it by a healthy margin for Marquez. And the third judge had an even scorecard, and there was an intelligent argument to be made on behalf of all three of those diverse scores. So what a main event it could be. It begins with an undercard showcase for a fighter who is expected, perhaps, to be a Pacquiao opponent later on this year, if, in fact, he can get through this matchup tonight. And that is 135-pound belt holder David Diaz. So let's take a look at the tail of the tape now. Just a little bit earlier, the pride of the Philippines, Manny Pacquiao arrived here for what will be his 10th fight in his last 11 outings against a Mexican opponent. Look at how clean that face is. Look at the absence of any swelling or puffiness or lines whatsoever. Emmanuel, he appears to be in sensational shape. He's in sensational shape, and mentally and spiritually, he seems to be very, very, very happy coming into this fight. This time around, according to all in his camp, no distractions. He came to Los Angeles to train at Freddie Roach's gym in Hollywood eight full weeks before the fight. This is in contrast to two occasions last year when Roach wasn't entirely happy with Pacquiao's training scene or with the enormous distractions that accompany his life in the Philippines. 
Nine rounds in the book. One to go. Just a short time ago. The second of the two main event combatants to make it to the arena, Juan Manuel Marquez. Between his two fights last year with Marco Antonio Barrera and Rocky Juarez, Marquez survived an automobile accident, but he got a big laceration on the right side of his forehead. And you can see the scar visible there as he walks in. Emmanuel Stewart, he says that it has never opened up in training or in the Juarez fight. But what if he happened to incur a headbutt right on that scar tissue? Isn't that a possible liability? It's possible, but sometimes when you have, uh, believe it or not, an injury like that, it's the toughest part of his head. Sometimes the way the tissues have healed inside is like a hard gristle right there. It may be the last place that he would get a cut. Well, and speaking of hard gristle, he has certainly hardened his offensive game in the four years since his first meeting with Manny Pacquiao. Moving to a higher risk, more offensive style. Juan Manuel Marquez in his locker room. In the first fight against Manny Pacquiao, he tasted the canvas three times in the first round. Then via remarkable comeback, carved out round by round, a counter-punching exhibition par excellence. One judge saw him winning 10 of the remaining 11 rounds in the fight from Pacquiao. Is he still that good at age 34? Has his style evolved so far from what he was that night that we'll see an entirely different fight tonight? These questions remain to be answered as the evening goes on. And there is one of the most popular and perhaps the most exciting fighter in the world today. And a man who deeply appreciates and rampantly enjoys his celebrity. Manny Pacquiao, enormously popular in the Pacific Rim, popular now in Mexico too, because of his ongoing war against that country's great fighters tonight. In the person of Marquez, he meets a Mexican opponent for the 10th time in his last 11 fights, seven in a row. Probably the best fighter ever come to come to the U.S. Referee's instructions from Kenny Bayless to Manny Pacquiao. You'll clean it off and turn it back into your mouth without any instructions. Okay? Now, when you're working inside, if a glove goes under the arm, the other arm is free, I'm gonna give you a chance to work out of that clinch. I might even say work out, punch out, but I'm gonna give you that chance. If you don't work out of that clinch, I'm gonna give the command to break or stop. And at that time, I want you to protect yourself and take a clear step back. Now, when you're working inside, if the heads are coming close, I'll say, watch your head. If the punches are going a little south, I'll say, up, up, keep them up. If the fouls continue, I will stop the action. I'll look at that fighter. I'll issue him a hard warning. At that point, if it continues at my discretion, I will start deducting points. Man, if I feel that you deliberately commit a foul, I don't have to give you any warning. I can take two points off your score. Now, in the event, but you guys are banging well. You knock your opponent to the ground, and from all the excitement, you hit him while he's down. That punch could be a two-point deduction, or the severity of that punch could be a disqualification. And the same thing holds at the end of the bell. The bell sounds, he throws a late punch, you flip it, you come back, and you hit him. That punch could cost you a two-point deduction, or the severity of that punch could be a disqualification. So listen to my commands at all times. Everything should go well. Are there any questions? Kenny Bayless is an athletic referee, quick and gifted on his feet. Larry Merchant, if ever a fight called out for a rematch, it was the first fight between Juan Manuel Marquez and Manny Pacquiao. Why have we had to wait nearly four years? They just had to go in different directions, and I think part, a big part of it was that Marquez rejected a, an offer to fight Pacquiao. At that time, he thought he should get at least as much as Pacquiao or close to it rejected $750,000 and went and fought for $30,000 and lost his title and has been battling his way back ever since to his credit. Um, tonight, he's getting a guarantee of a million and a half dollars. So you could say that, in a sense, it's worked for him, at least economically, unless you want to look back and speculate that he would have won a rematch and would have changed his life back then. How many of his business decisions have been influenced by his life in the shadows cast by Marco Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales? Well, 
the other business decision that he made that was a bad one was rejecting an opportunity to fight Prince Nassim. Barrera took it, became a national hero, and went on to be the Barrera we know. Next fight up is the main event. That man, Juan Manuel Marquez, looking to prove that he was, in fact, the better man when first he fought Manny Pacquiao four years ago. And after Marquez was crushed to the canvas three times in the first round, he had the edge, and the rest of the fight wound up with a draw. Although one judge scored it 115-110 for Marquez. Another judge scored it 115-110 for Pacquiao who was going forward the entire time and was the aggressor, as has been the case, in all of his fights. By this point, Manny Pacquiao has become a better boxer with a much better right hand than was the case back in May of 2005, or 2004. How big a difference will that make tonight? There are a lot of big shots at ringside, including that one. Good fights, an ideal buildup for a long-awaited absolute must event. It happened May 8, 2004. Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez fighting to one of the most unusual draws in the recent history of the sport. At that time, instinctively, you would have said within a year, we're going to see the rematch. It's been nearly four years, and thank heaven that Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez are both still at or near the top of their games. Let's get ready for a great main event. can box, both can punch, both have the hearts of champions. It was a first round no one expected. Manny Pacquiao is a storm. This is why we use the word sensation. Third knockdown of the first round. Juan Manuel Marquez hasn't ever seen anything like that. And the comeback no one would forget. There's a hard right hand by Marquez that jolted Pacquiao. It could be the comeback of a lifetime for Juan Manuel Marquez. Marquez is making the stand of his life. Fire against fire. Down the stretch. Pacquiao's left. Marquez is right. What a battle. We go to the scorecards. The bout is a draw. In the four years since that decision, Manny Pacquiao's career has exploded. Another huge left hand by Pacquiao. Punch after punch after punch. Manny Pacquiao has the knockout. Meanwhile, Juan Manuel Marquez's star dimmed to barely a flicker until he revived it with a victory over countryman Marco Antonio Barrera last year. Uppercut for Marquez. Left hook. Barrera stunned and in trouble. Marquez looking to knock his man out. Through it all, one question has lingered. Who is the better fighter? Tonight, the answer finally comes. A rematch four years in the making. It's Juan Manuel Marquez versus Manny Pacquiao next. So at long last, it's time for our main event. Juan Manuel Marquez against Manny Pacquiao. Since last they met, the two fighters have taken widely divergent paths to get here tonight. No matter, in the ring, all is equal between the two men who fought to an epic draw. Here we go. Marquez versus Pacquiao is being brought to you by Mendeley Bay, boxing at its best. Tecate Beer, Cerveza with an attitude. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by HBO. Two weeks ago, Juan Manuel Marquez's younger brother, Rafael, lost an absolutely thrilling split decision to Israel Vasquez. No one would have complained if either fighter had been declared the winner. Tonight, will Juan Manuel be able to match his brother's feat of courage and skill and top it by earning a victory? Manny Pacquiao also has a younger brother, a boxer named Bobby, but there's no familial competition since the elder Pacquiao is clearly the superior fighter. Filipino pride is what drives Manny Pacquiao and that pride will be in full bloom tonight. Will it be enough against the craft of Juan Manuel Marquez? We'll soon see. And we're back live at ringside once again with HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. Larry, so many times in his career, Juan Manuel Marquez has gone into the ring actually to face three fighters, the opponent 
and his Mexican countrymen, Marco Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales. Both of them are faded now. Is this the night when Marquez can finally shed those shadows and move into the spotlight by himself? We all like to believe that with one fight or even one punch, you can change everything in boxing. And sometimes it does happen. But can you change a decade of frustration of being overshadowed by two more crowd-pleasing dynamic stars like Morales and Barrera? It took just a little bit too long for Marquez to learn that prize fighting is more than just bloodless technique. Nevertheless, tonight, if he can steal the drama once again from the drama king of boxing, Pacquiao, give us another thrilling night. That will be accomplishment enough. What you do under the lights, Jim, is more important than what you do in the shadows. Indeed, the lights are hot. What a crowd. Emmanuel Stewart, conventional wisdom is that now at age 34, antiquity for this weight class, Juan Manuel Marquez is four years older, whereas Manny Pacquiao is four years better. What's your take on that? I don't necessarily buy it. I think both guys are fighting pretty much to the peak of their game. I think that Pacquiao still has a little bit left. But I think that Marquez is still a good fighter, particularly his last fight when he fought Barrera. He really impressed me. He was a balanced out, aggressive puncher, boxer. And tonight, he's going to have to fight Pacquiao because Pacquiao doesn't have all of the other talents that Marquez has. Marquez is a better technical fighter, he's very intelligent, but he still has a job of dealing with just that brute strength and intensity and power of Pacquiao because Pacquiao would be doing that for 12 rounds. Unlike a lot of other big punchers, such as Mike Tyson, he was good for the early rounds. Pacquiao is going to be firing missiles at him from the first to the 12th, and he's going to have to fight Pacquiao. He's not going to be able to run from him. And behind us, it's become a great tradition in the sport. The fiercely energetic crowd, half Filipino, half Mexican, battle lines drawn. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the pageantry. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the first of three national anthems. Here to sing the national anthem of the Philippines, please welcome the lovely and talented Sierra Ana Soto. Paglayang minamahal Ang kislap ng watawat At mo'y tagumpay na nagniningning Ang bituin at araw niya Kailan pa may di magdidilim Lupa ng araw ng luwad At pagsinta Buhay langit sa piling mo Aming ligat And now, ladies and gentlemen, here to perform the Mexican national anthem, a legendary performer from Mexico, please welcome Teo Gonzalez. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresta y el bridón, y retiembla en sus centros la tierra, al sonoro rugir y del cañón y 
Que tiembla en sus centros la tierra Al sonoro rugir del cañón Siño patria, tus sienes de oliva De la paz el arcángel divino Que en el cielo tu eterno destino Por el dedo de Dios se escribió mas si osare un extraño enemigo Profanar con sus plantas tu suelo Piensa, oh patria querida, que el cielo Un soldado en cada hijo te dio Un soldado en cada hijo te dio Mexicanos al grito de guerra El acero aprestad y el bridón y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. ¡Viva México! And now, ladies and gentlemen, here to sing the national anthem of the United States of America, a young lady 14 years of age whose heritage is Filipina, Mexican American, please welcome Jasmine Villegas. of the tape for John Juan Manuel Marquez and Manny Pacquiao. A five-year age advantage for the Filipino star. Half inch in height for the Mexican star. Arm length, advantage of one inch measured from the armpit to the end of the fist for Pacquiao. They both weighed in within a pound of the 130-pound weight class limit. Tonight, Marquez has rehydrated up to 141. Pacquiao adding 16 pounds overnight. Has a functional four-pound weight advantage unofficially going into the ring. CompuBox numbers from the first fight. Larry Merchant, what do you see here? The landed punches virtually equal. Pacquiao more active, which resulted in him getting the credit in a few of the late close rounds. Rules of the bout whether unofficial ringside scorer Harold Letterman. Now, one Manuel Marquez, Manny Pacquiao fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case it comes caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed, and you cannot be saved by the bell at any round, yeah. including the 12th and oh, final round. Jim! By the estimation of both Ring Magazine and ESPN.com, these are two of the top five fighters in the world. 
Marquez is the one who has an official 130-pound title belt, so Pacquiao will enter the ring first, but they are fighting for the vacant ring magazine belt. Suffice to say, the winner of this fight is the man in the 130-pound weight class, as well as still one of the top five fighters in the world. I think it's a tremendous surprise, given the shape in which Pacquiao appeared yesterday, that he has put on unofficially 16 pounds, more than 10% of his body weight overnight. That surprises me very much. Emmanuel Stewart, what do you think? I've always felt that he's about seven pounds of natural body weight uh, mass bigger than Marquez, and I think that's going to be a factor tonight. I think he's physically very, very, very strong. And this and is probably this one is of the reasons. Weight. This is one of the reasons why they want him to go to 135 pounds, does his promoter and his handlers, immediately after this fight. So Pacquiao is trying to become the world champ at 130 pounds in what amounts to his last fight at 130 pounds, if all goes according to plan. In fact, he won his first world championship, I think, was about 106 pounds, 112 pounds when he was only 19 years old. And tonight, he will make in excess of $5 million. And he deserves it. He is a major, major attraction. Which means that he makes a great deal more than does the older Juan Manuel Marquez. The champion. A, a function of the yeah. fact that Marquez has never been able to generate the same kind of link with the audience, it's late in his career. But Larry, you've already touched on this subject. That's a part of his goal tonight. Well, Marquez is the champion, but Pacquiao is the attraction. Still in all, he'll be getting more than a million and a half dollars, probably his top purse. And as you listen to this crowd, once again, we remind you, for the 10th time in his last 11 fights, Manny Pacquiao is fighting against a Mexican opponent. He has become, in effect, an icon for Mexican fans as well as for fans in the Pacific Rim and the, and the United States. And Marquez, who spent much of his career battling the images of Marco Antonio Barrera and Derek Morales, now says he's here to avenge their losses to Pacquiao. Irony upon irony, politics making strange bedfellows, the crowd at a fever pitch. Let's go to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, welcome to the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. And a recognition by the Bible of Boxing Ring Magazine for the true world championship. This is a presentation of Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated in association with Romanza Boxing Productions and MP Promotions, along with HBO Pay-Per-View. Sponsored by Tecate Cerveza with an Attitude, Rockstar Energy Drink Party Like a Rockstar, Smart Communications, and Southwest Airlines, the symbol of freedom. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman John Bailey, Executive Director Keith Kaiser, and the WBC President Jose Suleiman. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout, Dwayne Ford, Tom Miller, and Jerry Roth. And inside the ring, in charge of the action, referee Kenny Bayless. And now, we've met the promoters, sponsors, and officials. Now it's time to meet the stars of the show. And that means it's time for the most famous phrase in boxing history. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the blue corner, Wearing white, official weight, 129 pounds. Professional record, 45 victories, including 34 knockouts, three defeats, with two belts even. From General Santos City, Philippines, the challenger, 
former WBC flyweight world champion, former IBF featherweight world champion, and current WBC international super featherweight champion, Manny Pacman. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black, official weight, 130 pounds. Professional record, 48 victories, including 35 knockouts, three defeats with one draw. Damas y Caballeros de Ciudad de Mexico, four-time world champion, former WBA, IBF, and WBO featherweight world champion, the reigning, defending, WBC super featherweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel Dinamita. with Larry Merchant and Emmanuel Stewart. Okay, trunks are a little high here, so punches in this area will be considered a good punch. Punches here will be okay. Now, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to cut you to keep the fight clean at all times, protect yourself at all times, and what I say, you must obey. Touch up, good girl, Venezuela. It seems that both fighters for four years have been leading up to this one night and here it is is it round 13 of the first fight in which case, Marquez's tactical skills could be the difference? Or is it a different fight because Manny Pacquiao has progressed so much as a boxer and has so developed his right hand in the four years since the first fight? There's the straight left hand from Pacquiao to start the violence. And it was followed by a quick little right hand. But before Pacquiao throws his left hand, he uses it most of the time. He's a little, he drops it and winds up on it. So it's interesting how he's been able to hit so many, so many people with it. When you, it's not really a direct short punch, but he just throws so many punches. Well, and it's so fast. You know, power is a function of strength and speed, and there's no faster power punch than Manny Pacquiao's left hand. But you said something uh, the last fight uh, when he fought the road. It was interesting that Manny hurts people with punches that are grazing punches. A lot of time he don't even land directly on the chin, which means he must be what we call him to be just heavy-handed. Even grazing punches, he scores not bounce with fall through time. Marquez is being careful early on to control distance, staying at range where Pacquiao has to come forward to try to find him, moving back and then stepping forward to fire that right hand. Just as was the case in the early stages of the first fight, it's Manny Pacquiao's left hand against Juan Manuel Marquez's straight right. And you see what Marquez is doing and trying to wait, wait till after. After oh, right, right hand lands. Because Pacquiao gets out of position when he throws his left hand. The timing of the action so far belongs to Marquez, who has been able to blunt Pacquiao with his feet as much as with his hands. much more of a chess match than what took place in the first round on May 8, 2004. Hard left hand by Pacquiao. Good body shot by Marquez. Drives Pacquiao back. Marquez trying to land a jab. First time he's really unfurled that. Pacquiao reaching with his jab. Ten seconds to go in the round. Any closing statement? An attempted body shot by Marquez. Hey! And 
he misses with the right hand to close out the action. Okay. Back this guy up with that double jab a little bit more for me, okay? All right? Hey. Right here. Come on. Hey. Come on. Hey. Come on. Real good, real good. Do the counter punches. The right straight or the right hook? Here you see which may have been the most significant punch of the whole round in the entire round was a straight right hand right on the chin directly from Marquez. Albi box numbers in round one belong to Pacquiao. Landing 12 out of 49, Marquez 6 out of 43. Pacquiao did land a couple of stiff left hands. Pacquiao has a really good upper body rhythm. He moves in and out. His body is always guarding, going left to right, which makes it very difficult to land punches on him also. Pacquiao now looks like he wants to make Marquez fight him more than box him. was sensational in 2006 with three straight victories, including his two knockouts of Eric Morales. He was quite successful last year as well with a knockout of Jorge Solis and a decision over Marco Antonio Barrera. But some ringsiders sensed that he wasn't as violent, wasn't as destructive as he had been in the past. In response to that, Pacquiao says he's trained harder for this fight, was more focused for this fight, is ready to be the old Manny Pacquiao again. The body looks terrific. A reaching left hand for Marquez. And I watch when Pacquiao gets out of position when he throws his left. He doesn't get as far out of position as he used to be years back. He may throw his left hand and get out of position, but he tries to get back right away. Marquez momentarily dipped. Did he dip or was his legs buckled? You know, we've talked about the importance of this fight for Marquez. It's also important for Pacquiao. He's established his greatness in the lower weight divisions. This is an opportunity for him to vault into the higher weight classes and make even more of himself. Marquez has landed two lead left hooks in this round. Not hard shots, but he's getting yeah. leather there. Yeah. That's quite unusual yeah. against the southpaw stand. It's very unusual. He's really setting the counter punch back here. That's what he's trying to do. But Pacquiao is not getting it out of position as much as he used to. But what Malquez is said is trying to every time he comes in, he's trying to punch and come back. But Another hard left hand for Manny. Manny's got a hard rhythm. You really can't time his movement as easy as it used to be. He's always got his in and out rhythm. Even there, he didn't get hit with clean punches. A right hand by Pacquiao got through. But Marquez has been more effective in this exchange. Uppercut up by Marquez. Two flip hook. Buckle Pacquiao. Big punch for Marquez to punctuate the second round. Lively, lively. When he throws that straight punch to the body, come over in it. Kill him with the counter punch. Muy bien. Very nice, very nice. Lively, lively, because he's touching your body. Here you see. Malke is working his counter punch once again when Pacquiao got out of position again, coming in, throwing a left hand. 
Marquez took advantage of it, and I'm quite sure that's what he's been working on in training over and over and over. Counter punching Pacquiao. Hockey box numbers already interesting. Pacquiao, we seem to have doubled Marquez's connects in the first round. Marquez doubled Pacquiao's connects in the second round, 18 to 9. Harold Letterman gave the first to Pacquiao in the second, Marquez. You know, looking at Marquez's eyes, I see the same determination that I saw in Nate Campbell's eyes last week. Regardless of what the outcome is going to be, he's a very fierce and determined man in this fight here. Well, in case you missed it, 36-year-old Nate Campbell produced the effort of a lifetime in beating Juan Baby Bull Diaz, 12 years his junior, in yeah. Cancun, Mexico last week. Straight left hand for Pacquiao. Marquez is moving back when Manny lands the left now. Marquez is just simply trying to uh, exploit any mistakes. Absolutely, oh, you're right. And yeah. the straight right hand lands right down the pipe for Marquez. You know, the aggression. Manny walked into it. He's trying to live off the aggression of Pacquiao. The challenge is Pacquiao to make him regret that aggression. And the fight, as the fight goes on, I see Pacquiao becoming tentative himself now. He's a little tentative to not going in and being aggressive because he's been counterpunched two or three times now. Yes, his so timing his hasn't timing been as yes. good as Juan Manuel Marquez. And no, his timing doesn't seem like his confidence is not as good as it was. And Marquez is effectively using his feet to get in and out. Yeah, Marquez is fighting very, very smart, very confident. And I think that at this stage right now, Pacquiao is still a little too leery of coming in now. They go head-to-head -head for a moment. Kenny Bayless checks both fighters. Back to round three action. Neither man has landed anything really big to the body. Marquez has been more frequent in going there. Pacquiao comes back with a straight left. Manny tries to tee off with the left and gets it in there. This is a late round rally for Pacquiao. But this can change back and forth from this right here. Down goes Marquez. On a straight left hand shot. Perfect shot by Pacquiao. Six, it may not have seven, been a home run, but it was a double into the corner. And Marquez is hurt. He's got to be very glad that he's going to hit that around. See that? This, this fight can go like this all night. Marquez almost went down a second time, and he almost went to the wrong corner as well. down right here. Beautiful short left. And it would have been down again the second time except for the ropes held him up. And then he came back and stunned Pacquiao slightly at the end of the round. That was the same sequence of punches as the one that buckled Pacquiao earlier. Marquez took an unwarranted risk looking to get at Pacquiao and paid a big price. Harold, how do you have it into the fourth? <laughs> Look at him. Two rounds to one. 29. 27, Manny Pacquiao. You got to give him an extra point for that knockdown in round three. He won the first round. I thought Marquez won the second. Two to one, Pacquiao. Marquez trying to go back to the body and trying to go back to a more tactical style now. Pacquiao trying to search and destroy. Marquez trying to shock him with counter-punching aggression. I'm really impressed with Pacquiao's. I'm really his time and coordination, the way he's in and out is... Upper body movement. I've never saw him this good with his upper body movement. And, and in that exchange earlier, he landed a really quick, solid right hand. He is an amazing athlete. Just an amazing athletic specimen. 
the speed, the power, the dynamism, the stamina, the ability to keep doing it. That's why Manny Pacquiao is so great. has decided to face the inevitable. He can't back yeah. off. Pacquiao's confidence is building up now. He's shooting his missiles now. He's running it. Look at this. Well, this is the kind of firefight that Marquez didn't want to get into, but, he had but Pacquiao is making him fight. Yeah, you're not going to outbox Pacquiao. He's going to have to fight him. And Pacquiao seems to be stronger now. His confidence seems to have come back. And he's punching with so much power and confidence. It's, it's a measure of Pacquiao's improvement as a fighter, how measured he's been in this round. He didn't get too excited off of the end of the last round. He's coming in the left. Okay. No Come on, look alive, look alive, look alive. Don't fall in this game plan. Yeah, you see Pacquiao land his patented right and straight left following through right on the chin. When we asked Manny Pacquiao yesterday what kind of fight he expected, he broke out in a big grin and said, hey, <laughs> he himself said, meaning Juan Manuel Marquez, he said it was going to be a war. I'm very happy about that. Sometimes in this fight, it has become a war. And when it is, Manny Pacquiao, as usual, has the advantage. Well, he loves the fight. You can just see it in his eyes. I don't think there's ever been anybody in the boxing ring that loves the fight as much as he does. That's a big statement. Yeah, but he loves the fight. You can, you can see it. And, and, and I think he would rather be doing this than anything else in the world. Henry Armstrong? I don't think he says much of this man. I've looked at this looking at his eyes. You can see the intensity and the fierceness in him that, that says that he is a true fighter. Copy of box numbers through four round found him landing an almost identical number of punches. 51 for Marquez and 53 for Pacquiao. Little to choose between the two, but it's Pacquiao who has put Marquez on his trucks. At this stage, Pacquiao looks so, so sturdy and so strong mentally and physically. Two good jabs from Pacquiao, something we seldom saw from the past.
Good right hand lands for Pacquiao. Backing Marquez up. Juan Manuel comes forward. Reaching with the left to the body. Reaching with the left upstairs. Jab by Pacquiao. Great straight right hand by Marquez. for Pacquiao. Marquez was moving to the side. There's the right hand again. That's the scoring weapon for Juan Manuel Marquez, who has managed to keep it a boxing match in this round. And, and he may have won this round, too, because it's been a tit-for-tat round, and that was, that was a good clean punch there. Both men try to rally down the set and steal the round. Both men land a couple of punches. With the hook, with the right, remember, whatever you can. And use the uppercut. But remember, he's not in position for all the time for that. And your hands up, your hands up, and the uppercut, right uppercut with the hook to the liver. Yeah. All right? Okay. All right, yeah, once you get busy out there. All right? Now here, maybe when you're first, you control him. All right? Yeah. All right, let's be first out there with that jab. Control him. Yeah, once again, we see one single punch is probably the most uh, rememberable punch in the whole round, which was a straight right, but this time it came from Marquez. Zombie box numbers in the fifth. Marquez 12 out of 38. Pacquiao 10 out of 40. Relatively slow pace for these kinds of fighters. 10 of Marquez's 12 connects with power shots. Probably almost all that straight right hand. His best tactic against Pacquiao. Already into the sixth. After all the waiting, nearly four years between fights, we're almost halfway through. right hand by Marquez. Very smart. He started the right hand and waited until Max Pacquiao moved his head and then he let it go after that. Smart. Yeah. Body shot by Marquez. Nacho Beristain was asking for that. The left hand to the liver between rounds. Here's a slight abrasion outside of one of Manny Pacquiao's eyes. The left eye. And that's what Marquez targets when he fires that right hand. Yeah, he's face pot shotting him right now. Manny has lost his rhythm. He's got to get his rhythm back. Well, Freddie Roach said, I want you to get busy. That's really what Manny needs to do, is to go in and throw punches and bunches. His flurries and combinations destroyed Eric Morales. Right now, Marquez has got him back on a string. Body yeah, shot by Juan Manuel. Yeah, this is the pace where Marquez wants to keep the fight. At this distance, and at this pace right here, where he's more effective than... Then uh, Pacquiao. Is. Now Pacquiao gets in a good body shot. And Marquez sure. tilts him a little bit with the right hand upstairs. As I said earlier, anything can happen in this fight. I mean, one of these guys could get knocked down and come back the same way and knock the other guy down. Hard right hand by Marquez. You see the difference in power. Now Marquez gets in a left hook. He's outboxing Pacquiao again. Pacquiao looks physically much stronger, but at this, this round here, Marquez is winning the fight. Well, he's this, neutralizing this. his left hand so far. He's not letting him dominate him with the left hand. Keeping Pacquiao just conscious enough of his own right. As improved as Pacquiao's right hand is, I would take my chances on him beating me with the right hand. He hasn't been that figure. I think the biggest thing to me for Pacquiao to fight is that he's, his timing and upper body movement and rhythm, in and out rhythm, is much better than I've ever saw it. Little body punch inside for Marquez. Pacquiao reaches take to the body and Marquez hits him upstairs. Kind of punch it taking advantage of Pacquiao getting out of position when he throws his left hand. There it is, he tried it again. In rounds like this, you can feel Juan Manuel Marquez out thinking Manny Pacquiao. Yes. Good right hand. Clearly, Marquez won that round. Oh, 
on, boo boy. Knee breath. Come on. Keep your arms down. All right, Manny. You're letting this get away from you. You're standing right in front of this guy, letting him get off his combinations. Yeah. Seventh round, coming up. You need to finish off your punches. You need to finish off your punches with the combinations. When you throw the right, throw the hook. Throw the hook with hook to the left. And then the uppercut. Come on, you haven't thrown one. Throw to the body. Throw to the body. Come on, his mouth is open already. We go to the seventh of a scheduled 12. CompuBox numbers in the sixth were relatively even. To my eyes, it was clear that Marquez tactically won the round. Harold Letterman, what did you see and how do you have it? Okay, Jim, I get it three rounds apiece, but in the all importance category, 57 56 Manny Pacquiao, because of that extra point that he gets for the knockdown in round number three. Jim, I agree with you. One that one Marquez doing a beautiful job with that right hand to win rounds five and six. If the mark has run, run round two. So three to three, but Pacquiao by a point on a knockdown. I have the same score. Isn't it interesting that it took a knockdown in this fight as it did three knockdowns in the first fight for Marquez to find what he wanted to do. Hard left hand by Pacquiao. Marquez missing, coming back. The fight follows its pattern of seesaw activity back and forth, and this will be around the Pacquiao wins. Yeah, but, you know, Marquez, this is really Marquez's style of fight, the way he's fighting, and technically where he can counter punch, and he's a little bit smarter by keeping that space. But I just like the energy of Pacquiao, even when he goes back between the round, I just, he looks so much stronger, so much, so much energy seems to be still in his body as compared to Marquez. Juan Manuel landed a little left hook to the body. Hey. And sometimes uh, a little left. Oh, and they have a headbutt, and there's blood outside the right eye of Ron Manuel Marquez. And Marquez with a look of disgust on his That's face. That's a little headbutt. Left-handed, right-handed. All right. Time in. Fortunately for Marquez, the cut is far enough outside the eye that I don't think the blood will affect his vision. And I'm quite sure we're not your very soon here with a good cut man in the corner also. Marquez landed a quick right hook, momentarily lifted Marquez off his front foot. Another left hand for Pacquiao. Marquez has to fight back. And They're will, trading sacks. It's the main Pacquiao side ground. Yeah, but Marquez is going to have to fight him. You can't, you can't outbox this guy. You're going to have to fight him. He outboxed him for two rounds. Well, after, the, after that exchange, Marquez was in balance, and Pacquiao was falling backward. It's almost as if the sight of blood on Marquez's face has again brought out the Tiger in Pacquiao. Marquez missing with that big right hand. Now he lands the right and drives Pacquiao back. Pacquiao with two hard lefts. They're fighting again in the seventh. He's cut. He's cut. He's, cut. He's also cut. Oh, it's very little cut. No, it's, nada. it's very little cut. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. Don't be scared. It's nothing there. Nothing. It's a headbutt. Manny, need some water? All right, Manny. That's the way to fight this guy. On your toes, in and out. Speed. Manny, listen to me. He cannot handle you. Here we see the head, but in, in particular, the way that Pacquiao fights, because he lunges in when he punches. So whenever you get a butt from him, it's really a true butt. But it could have been either way. The other guy could have got cut. But, and right after you see his head and it punches, long one-two. 
Right jab followed by a long straight left. In the summer, we saw a fight in Madison Square Garden between Shane Mosley and Miguel Cotto in which the two fighters landed to 12 rounds, an identical number of punches by CompuBox count, 248 apiece. Through seven rounds tonight, Marquez, by CompuBox count, has landed 93 punches, the same number he landed through seven in the first fight, and Pacquiao has landed 91. An amazingly even fight, and the straight right hand by Marquez hurt Pacquiao. I think it landed in his eye, Jim. Yeah. That's what and I mean. he squinted his eye. He's not hurt, but... And now there's blood. In the That's eye. what I mean. He and, hurt and, him and, with and, that punch. And, 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 he cut him, and there's blood on his eye. It was from the from the from the blow too. That's it wasn't a butt. That's damage. Now both guys are now going to have to fight with him. The last fight, Marquez fought with, with his with his nose broke with his after the first round. This is living up to what it was expected to be, but a little bit more tactical. But still, the drama is still here. The location of Pacquiao's cut far more dangerous to him than the location of Marquez's cut is to him. I think Pacquiao it is, is very bothered by it. It's bothered him very much like Diaz was. It's not just a cut, but it's bothered him. That cut is right in the eyelid or in the eye. And you notice that Marquez immediately mixed in body punches to compound the damage. Left hook lands for Marquez, right on the cut. Pacquiao's gonna try to come back. Marquez is more accurate. A sacred punch that if Marquez used more would be very effective and would change the whole fight. A simple left jab, which would control Pacquiao better. Well, he can use it a lot more now if Pacquiao's lead eye is compromised. Yeah. There's a perfect combination by Marquez. And he should he is that swamping jab. Pacquiao in this round, taking tremendous advantage of the tactical flaw that has been created for Pacquiao by that cut. Perfect uppercut by Marquez. Pacquiao trying to swing away with the left hand and turn things back around. Pacquiao still punches, punches with so much power with that left hand. With him. And Marquez is exchanging with him, but his head is up a lot of times. And all Pacquiao needs is only one left hand punch and he can change this whole fight again. As Manny Pacquiao goes back to his corner, his cut man is the veteran Joe Chavez. And Chavez must now go to work. Suddenly, he's the most important man in the ring for Pacquiao. Deep breath, Manny. Manny. Here we see the right hand that landed that really did all of the damage to the right eye of Pacquiao. Solid right, no head, but nothing accidentally or otherwise. And here you see a simple one-two. Both punches landed to the right eye. Pacquiao was more than a two-to-one favorite in this fight, which seemed to be high, and now it seems to be way more than high. In round eight, 21 connected punches for Marquez, only five connected for Pacquiao. He only threw 25. He was trying for most of the round to recover from the badly cut right eye. Look out, look out. Pacquiao suffered a cut on that eye in his first fight with Eric Morales, and it was a factor in his decision loss. Even though the Ben Oz have always had Pacquiao here, when you talk to a general, not just the fans here, but general people I've been speaking to, everybody's been like split even. In fact, I would say probably more of them have been picking more Marquez that I spoke to. 
And that was even before Clemens on a fight. Well, those are boxing people. They yeah. aren't the ones who make for the odds in the casinos. Right, right. That's, That's about how many Filipinos bet on Pacquiao and how many Mexicans bet on Marquez. Hard right hand by Pacquiao. And incidentally, Chavez got the blood to stop. The swelling is still there, but it's not bleeding. Yeah, so far, both of the cut guys have did a good job. Now, Chaberstein does his own cuts in Marquez's corner. Again, Joe Chavez was the man who stopped Pacquiao's bleeding between rounds. Perfect straight right hand by Marquez. And the blood begins to flow again as Pacquiao reaches up and thumbs it with his glove. That's the straight Hard left hand by Pacquiao. That's the straight left that I've been waiting on him to make because he's. Marquez is pulling back, but he's still real in a position to get hit with those left hands. And the hit and the mar right eye of Marquez is now uh, bothering him more than it did previously. Shot lands for Marquez. This round is on the table with 40 seconds to go. Yeah, but the momentum is going with Pacquiao now. He's, That's he's, correct. He's got his rhythm to go on again. Yep, and he's getting some of his confidence back after it clearly wavered in the eighth round. It, looks, it may be a, a new cut over Marquez's eyes. One thing we can be sure of, when a Marquez gets into a fight, it's a fight. That's a second cut. I believe you're right. With the right eye. Yeah. Yep. This is not the one outside anymore. This was mud. This one must have been caused by a left hand punch by Pacquiao. It's good to have a good boxing doctor over there, Jeff Davidson. Good doctor, because a lot of boxing panic can stop a fight. Nevada's medical supervision is the best. They trade shots. What a war. Both men trying desperately to win the round. Mr. Vaseline. Abre. Open up. Yeah. You stop pressing. You stop pressing. That's what he caught you. Press him. Press him. Here you see Pacquiao is getting his range again and start to find his target with that long, straight left hand. In fact, that's the punch, evidently, that probably caused the second cut. CompuBox numbers in the ninth. My gosh, are we already in the tenth round? Marquez landed 12, and Pacquiao landed 13, and Harold, that wasn't an easy round to score. How do you have the fight? <laughs> okay, Jim, five rounds to four, 86, 84, Manny Pacquiao. Jim, I tell you, that, that one point for the last time, Started with a brilliant Pacquiao left hand, which looked for a moment as though it was going to knock Marquez down. And he just looks so strong, as I said, going back to the rounds. Even I look at Marquez walks, but he just looks weaker and, and, and don't seem to have the energy or the strength of Pacquiao. and the blood begins to flow in his right eye. Big round for Pacquiao so far.
Pacquiao's right eye has been patched up well so far. Yeah, Joe Thomas doing a fine job in Pacquiao's corner. And Nacho Beristain has an increasingly difficult job yeah, on his that, hands. That's that second cut. The bad first one was bad, but the second cut seems to be really bad. In fact, the doctor was over there, Dr. Davidson was even seeming to consider maybe stopping it by telling the referee that if it worsens to stop the fight. It would be a tremendous disappointment if a fight like this was stopped on a cut. Big disappointment, but I think the fans would understand it. Both guys have been cut. Pacquiao ripping the left hand. Marquez coming back. What guts both fighters have shown tonight. Great right hand by Marquez. Pacquiao's mouthpiece drops out of his mouth. I mean, he wasn't hit. He said maybe he's getting tired. Marquez like goes after him, trying to take usual. advantage of this. He knows that Pacquiao's lost his mouthpiece. And maybe he's getting tired, too. If he hits him right in the mouth, he could cut him. But it's Pacquiao who backs him off. You're not pressing him. You're not pressing him. When you get the punch in, you're waiting. You're waiting, and then he builds. Come on, press, press, press. There's only two more rounds, Juan. Only two more rounds. Attack the body. Put the uppercut in. Attack the body. Attack the body. Oh, strong. Oh. And he can't, he can't tolerate it anymore. If you hit the body, he's not going to take it anymore. You see, I use your punch right here. You see Pacquiao duck a punch and just wing a punch, not even knowing where it's going, and it landed. Blood is drama. We have blood. We have drama. It would be no injustice if Jeff Davidson stopped the fight because of the cut over Marquez's eye. It is a brutal gash. But CompuBox numbers in the 10th were still almost even. Marquez 15 punches landed. Pacquiao 17 punches landed, equal in power shots. Manny's just happened to be the harder shots. What a great job Joe Chavez has done with Pacquiao's right eye. It's closing. But no blood has flowed for the last couple of rounds. Kenny <laughs> Bayless tells Juan Manuel Marquez to keep him up. Yeah. Okay. Pacquiao gets time to recover if he wants it. Okay. Time in. Touch up, touch up, touch up. What a quick right hook by Pacquiao as Marquez was coming in. Yeah. And it sets up a straight left hand that drives yeah. Marquez back into the corner. Marquez is going straight back to get hit with those left, so he's not slipping his head at all. He's going straight back in a straight line. Winging right hand by Marquez. Not as much power in that shot as when he throws it straight up the gut. That's the punch that can hurt Pacquiao if he lands a couple of them or three of them. Pacquiao comes back with his own right hand. No, 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 no. Pacquiao blocked three punches in a row. A part of his game that you don't often see. Marquez reaching over the top, 
some of his punches are losing steam. When he throws the straight right hand, he's still got some steam. Pacquiao's defense is a lot better than it used to be. Even though he's off balance a lot, you see Marquez punching. He half blocks and catches on punches where he used to in the first fight, he was getting hit clean. But he usually he keeps he's a little bit aware of punches coming back than he used to be. So he catches a lot of them on elbows and they're not as effective as it appears to be all the time. Unless he has won this round, and that's if he Marquez is slipping into that area where he may need a knockout to beat Manny Pacquiao. You're doing good, but don't let him go. Push him back, push him back. Attack the body, you have to attack the body. Attack the body and then finish off with the right and the uppercut. Up we got hook. Come on. Last round, Juan, you gotta come up with everything. Upper and the left hook. I have this fight. Six to five for Marquez, which means that I have an even fight because of the knockdown by Pacquiao. Well, that heightens the drama. Straight right hands for Marquez, two of them. is going to be looking to land one more big left hand at least. Sometimes judges score blood, and it's Marquez who has had blood flowing down his face in the last three rounds of the fight. Good uppercut by Marquez. Sets up a straight right hand. Pacquiao comes running back at him, and Marquez almost tackles him in the middle of the ring. If he can just stay away from Pacquiao's left hand, which is really the only thing he's doing, he, he has a good chance of winning this round, which could be crucial. Solid shots by Marquez, and he ducks Manny for the left. Perfect. What he did just there, going underneath. There you go. He's got to keep doing that instead of going straight back. Good left straight hand up. by Marquez. Pacquiao lands a solid shot, but up to this point, Juan Manuel is winning the round. We've got one minute to go. High drama in Las Vegas. We waited four years to see this rematch. Juan Manuel Marquez yes. trying to avenge all of Manny Pacquiao's triumphs against Mexican fighters and driving Pacquiao back into the ropes. Marquez going out on his field if he's losing and showing you all the heart that you might expect from a great, proud Mexican fighter. Well, whatever the decision is, is one thing, but this round looks like Marquez is winning the round, simply by avoiding those lunging left-hand punches, bending down. And Pacquiao doesn't have much more than that, and so he's beating with other short combination punches. Now here comes the blood, and here comes the crowd on their feet. Everybody's up. He avoid that left hand punch. He's got a good chance of winning this round. One more right hand for Marquez. One more combination for Pacquiao. They trade shots down the stretch. Hell of a fight. I'm calling it another draw. <laughs>
<laughs> Michael Buffer stands by to eliminate the suspense. Ladies and gentlemen, after one of the all-time great 12 rounds in the super featherweight division, we go to the scorecards. Jerry Roth scores the bout. 115-112, Marquez. Dwayne Ford, 115-112, Pacquiao. Tom Miller, 114-113, to the winner on split decision. And new champion from the Philippines, Manny. The difference in the fight was the knockdown. Two of the three judges, including Tom Miller, who created the difference here, gave the 12th round to Marquez. But at the end of the day, it's the knockdown that creates the one-point margin for Pacquiao. Within the past month, both Juan Manuel Marquez and Rafael Marquez have lost brilliant, spirited, violent fights by a single point in split decisions. Final CompuBox numbers in the fight, and they'll be almost dead even in terms of number of punches landed. Marquez winds up landing 15 more punches than Pacquiao, an average of a little over one more landed punch per round. Lands at a higher connect percentage, 34% to 25%. Jabs and the edge here. Well, in a southpaw versus a, versus a conventional fighter fight, the jab is not a huge weapon for either fighter. Power shots are where the fight was decided. And Marquez landed more of them, and at a higher percentage. But Pacquiao landed the punch that put Marquez on his trunks, and that ultimately was the difference in the fight. Larry Merchant stands by with the winner. All right, thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Manny. Were you surprised by the result? Did you think you had won the fight? Yeah, I think I, I won the fight, and uh, and um, I really expect this fight is going to be hard because Marquez he trained hard and he prepared this fight. What did you see in him that was different from the first fight? What did you do? to try to win this fight? Actually, um, the last time, uh, the first fight, he jab a lot, and, uh, and, then, and then now uh, he, he, he didn't jab. How much did the cut over your eye bother you? Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, really bothered me because I can't see my, my right eyes, and then uh, I can see his uh, right, and then lip, lip, right hands and, uh, and hook. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm so bothered. And, and I told uh, my, my coach that um, uh, me get a heal so I can uh, recover my, my stuff. The difference in this fight proved to be your knockdown of him. Let's see if we can take another look at the knockdown and you tell us what happened. You tried the right hand and you missed. Well, um, that's our uh, plan. Uh, number one plan for training is the left hook, and uh, and uh, I'm lucky to hit that in in, in the in in that round. Did he do a good job, other than that, of not letting you do too much damage with your left hand? Well, um, I I see Marcus this tonight a lot of improvement than the first one because um, he's uh, he moved fast and. Uh, he he hit movement. He have a hit movement and um, more more counter punch. Could you have beaten him four years ago with this style of fighting, or are you so much better now that you were able to beat him this time? 
Well, I, I think um, I believe that I, I do my best uh, tonight, and, and uh, I'm happy because I win. And uh, I, I really, it, it's a really hard opponent, uh, Marquez. Is, uh, that's why, that's why I'm. Uh, I'm uh, All right. It, we assume this is your last fight at junior lightweight. That you will move up and wait for your next fight. Is that true? I don't know yet because uh, I didn't talk to my uh, promoter yet, and also my my uh, my camp and uh, but we have a plan to, to fight on 135 pounds but uh, it's not yet a uh, uh, fix thank you congratulations right, again thank you, Manny. Uh, Juan Manuel you fought a wonderful fight first tell us how bad was the eye through the late stages of the fight for you to be able to deal with. No, 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 no me afectó. Ese ese corte fue un cabezazo y este bueno, la pelea todo estuvo bien. Sentimos que ganamos. Esa decisión no es justa. It didn't affect me. It was a headbutt and then we thought we won and the decision wasn't correct. Once again, a knockdown proved to be the difference in this fight. Did you fight other than that the fight you wanted to fight? Sí, buscamos la pelea. Nosotros estuvimos buscando la 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 lo lastimé cuatro o cinco veces, lo puse mal. Y bueno, la pelea no es de otra vez. Vuelvo al 2004. La pelea no es de un round, de una caída. Yes, es de doce rounds. Yes, we pressed and we hurt him. We hurt him three, four, five times. But it, like in 2004, it's not only just one round. Do you feel that, in a way, this is the story of your career? That somehow. This slipped away from you, for, as well as you fought him both times. No, 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 se me dio nada. Yo hice un gran trabajo. La gente es la mejor, es el mejor juez. La gente vio, nos vio ganar y bueno, que él puede hacer uno a esto. Esto, estas decisiones hace que que un peleador se desanime o se haga más fuerte. I haven't lost, I haven't lost anything. I haven't lost anything at all. And the people will see, and the people know who really won the fight. And we will see, and the decisions like this one obviously is discouraged, but we believe we won. Thank you, Juan Manuel, for another wonderful fight. Jim? What an amazing show. And so reminiscent of the first fight, Emmanuel, in the sense that, once again, one judge pretty clearly scores the fight for Pacquiao. One judge pretty clearly scores the fight for Marquez. And the third judge has what amounts to an even scorecard with the sole exception of the one point for the knockdown scored by Pacquiao. You could not ask for a closer fight, and in some ways you couldn't ask for a more exciting one. That's right. It went pretty much as I expected. You know, it was going back and forth. And even when Marquez had been knocked down, I said anything could happen in this fight. Because these are two warriors right here. And both guys, when they feel they're on the verge of losing, they get new energy. They come back. They could fight each other over and over and over. It would always be the same way. And if all goes according to plan now, Manny Pacquiao, having just claimed superiority in the 130-pound weight class, is going to go on up to 135 to fight David Diaz for a belt that he holds, leaving Marquez in functional control of the 130-pound weight class at age 34. He still is considered by most people as the, as the number one guy. If, Mark, if Pacquiao leaves the division, he's going to be considered as the champion. And uh, I would love to see him fight again. As soon as possible. As yeah, soon we're bound to see up. both in up, more yes. big fights in their yeah. careers. Maybe we'll see a third fight, although to me it seems quite unlikely that Marquez would choose to go to 135 to fight a guy who is clearly a stronger guy. If the public demands that the money's there, I think these guys may come back in the ring and fight again at 130 again also. So. Money always yeah. talks. Larry Merchant, you verged on the past in calling or toward calling Juan Manuel Marquez and his brother Rafael Marquez, the greatest brother act in the history of the sport, within the past month. They both lose violent, eventful prize fights by a single point in split decisions. It got to be the unluckiest family in boxing, <laughs> at least the way they see it. Yeah, it seems to be, you know, the story of their life somehow. Um, I'm thinking now of an old Chinese <laughs> proverb: when your that when your house burns down, you can see the sun. And what Juan Manuel did after that draw four years ago was. He rebuilt himself, he came back, he saw the sun, he came to this fight, but somehow, somewhere, um, he always falls a quarter of an inch short uh, against the really special fighters that we have seen. But he himself is a darn good fighter, just as his brother is. Just that um, Manny is Manny, uh, Pacquiao, wow. Yeah, <laughs> indeed.
the excitement continues to be a tremendous hallmark of Pacquiao's career. And before we leave you, one more look at the three judges' scorecards just to underline the point we've made. Now, Dwayne Ford was the only one of the three judges who scored the 12th round for Manny Pacquiao. Had he turned it around and scored it for Juan Manuel Marquez, Pacquiao would still have been the winner on his scorecard. So Tom Miller's scorecard becomes the fulcrum on which Pacquiao gets the win, and the only difference there is the point that Pacquiao gets for his third round knockdown of Juan Manuel Marquez. Jerry Roth, clearly preferring the counterpunching style of Marquez throughout the fight, had Marquez winning by the same score by which the first judge had had Pacquiao winning. A near repeat of what took place four years ago. Well, it's been a great night. We want to thank you all once again for being with us on this HBO pay-per-view boxing event. Marquez versus Pacquiao has been brought to you by Mandalay Bay, boxing at its best. Tecate beer, cerveza with an attitude. Rockstar energy drink, party like a rock star. Southwest Airlines, symbol of freedom. And by HBO pay-per-view. The best in pay-per-view entertainment brought to you by HBO. We'd also like to thank the following internet partners. And now as my voice fades into the night for our entire crew, I'm Jim Lampley saying the last thing I'm capable of saying, good night from Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs>